Removing a wheel from a bike is something we all need to do at some point, whether that's just to fix a puncture or perhaps if you want to put your bike in a car and transport it. Now, removing wheels is a very easy thing to do, but it's also easy to make a few mistakes. So this is the best and safest way to remove and replace your wheels. Now, first up, before you remove your wheels, you need to understand which type of axle fastenings you have. Now, on most mountain bikes these days, you have what's known as quick release through axles. They're basically a bigger version of the classic quick release. Now, for this video, I'm gonna show you how to use those. I'm gonna show you how to use the Allen key version and also the classic quick release. Now, none of our presenter bikes here at GMBN actually have quick releases anymore because you don't often see them. However, I've just borrowed Dan the cameraman's bike just to have a look at this. So he's got an old giant here and this has got quick release levers on it. Now, a quick release lever is a cam operated lever. It's very easy to undo, but there's a couple of little details you need to know. On the bottom of the fork or the rear of the frame, there'll be little safety tabs. These are to ensure that if the lever comes loose, the wheel won't fall out. So you have to undo the lever enough in order for the wheel to pass through that. So quick release itself is a very simple thing. It's a cam operated lever on a bar with a thread on the end, a spring and a nut. All you need to do is make sure it's sufficiently tight and you should be able to close it. No problem and open it. That's all there is to it. But you don't tend to see it on mountain bikes that much these days. So I'm gonna show you the two common versions right now that you'll see on most modern mountain bikes. Now with most modern mountain bikes, you'll find that either have the quick release style through axle system like you see on my Scott here, or you're gonna have the Allen key version which you'll see on my Nuke Proof here. So to make it super easy for you, I'm just gonna show you one of each, nice and simple, but the process is exactly the same no matter what axle you have. Check it. Most mountain bikes today have disc brakes on them, even the budget bikes, but occasionally you're gonna get one that has regular V brakes or cantilever brakes. If that's the case, then you need to loosen the cable first before you can remove the wheel to enable the tire to pass the brake pads. In this case, it's a conventional bike that has a disc brake on it, and I'm gonna need a six millimeter Allen key. So you either want a multi-tool for that, or good old fashioned Allen keys. So I'm just gonna get my six millimeter Allen key, Nice and simple, put straight into the end there, into the, the head. And you want to loosen this anti-clockwise or counterclockwise. Nice and easy. And because it's a through axle, the threads are actually on the fork end. So you just want to completely remove this from the bike. When it comes loose, you can slide this straight out. And there we go, there is the axle. Nice and simple now to remove. Fork goes up, wheel comes out. Now, something to pay attention to when you are removing your wheel from the bike is if you accidentally press the brake lever, you can squash the brake pads together. So a little handy tip for you, if you're putting your bike in a car perhaps, is to get a bit of cardboard, fold it in half, wedge it in between your, your disc brake pads, just like so. And that basically takes up the same void that the disc would. So if your brake lever is accidentally pressed, nothing is gonna be affected. And when you go to put your wheel back in, it's gonna work perfectly and you won't have to prise them apart. If unluckily you do manage to squeeze the brake lever and your pads are drawn together, a flat bladed screwdriver will be fine to just prise them apart. Just be careful when you do that. And for putting the wheel back in, you just need to make sure it's orientated correctly so the disc rotor is on the same side as the caliper. Now you want to line it up, use line of sight there just to make sure it slides in between the brake pads. And then it will sit home nicely. Now it's a case of sliding the axle back into place and tightening up. Once that wheel is in place, all you need to do is slide the axle back in and make sure that the threads on the end bite on the threads in the end of the fork there. Now, sometimes you might want to just stand over the bike just to make sure it lines up correctly. So you can get a good line of sight. There you go, I can feel it going into the end there. And then simply tighten up that Allen key on the end to make sure that the wheel stays nice and secure. Job done ready to hit the trails. Now the good news is, if you have any sort of quick release lever on your bike, like on this quick release 15 here, you don't need any tools to remove either your wheels. However, you do need to pay attention when putting them back in again, because there's an important safety feature I'm gonna show you. To remove the wheels, sometimes you'll find some brands, the lever will be on the non-drive side of the bike, other brands will be on the other side. The principle is identical, and you need to undo them in a counterclockwise or anti-clockwise movement. Same as before, 
with the quick release. Literally undo the lever, it's a cam based lever, and then simply unwind until the threads aren't unwinding anymore, and then slide the axle straight out, and then the wheel is ready to remove. Nice and simple. Same thing applies to put the wheel back in, make sure it's orientated correctly, and then using line of sight, line up the disc rotor in between the brake pads and then sit it home. And you simply want to replace that axle, make sure the threads grip at the end, and then wind it back into the bike. Now the idea is that you tighten this up and the lever needs to be facing in a safe orientation. In this case, it's completely upright with the fork. Now the reason for that is if you tighten it against the fork, the cam can't actually tighten sufficiently and it could come undone. If you want to know a bit more detail about all the different types of axle out there, there's a link below this very video in our new essential series on GMBN Tech and that will detail the very specific things about them. But the fundamentals are the same, just use your common sense, make sure it's in a safe position, make sure the lever is closed properly and make sure it's not in a position like for example facing forwards like this. If it's facing forwards and you ride along a trail with lots of brambles, that could unflip it. And of course, with the rattling over time, the lever could undo and the axle could fall out. So make sure you do it nice and safe, get it done right. Okay, now it's time to look at removing and replacing the rear wheel. Now, regardless of the type of axle you have, it's the same principle. So if you just take note of what I said earlier in the video with the Allen keys or the levers, and you apply that to this, it's no problem. Now, all bikes will have gears on the rear. Now, you wanna make sure that your gear is shifted so the chain is in the smallest sprocket. And the reason for that is if it's in the biggest sprocket, there'll be a lot of chain tension, and you'll be fighting that when you remove and replace the wheel. So make it easier for yourself to start with, put it in a small sprocket. So this particular bike has a SRAM derailleur on it, so you want to swing that lower cage all the way around and engage the button which locks the cage. This basically makes the chain nice and slack, so it makes it very easy to remove that wheel. If your bike has a Shimano derailleur on it, chances are it might be a clutch derailleur, in which case you need to just move this little lever. So now it's time to literally undo the axle and let the wheel slip out of the bike. So depending on your axle type, you need to loosen that axle and unwind it from your bike. So mine is unwound now, so I'm just gonna slide it all the way out, and just remove that. Now lift your bike up, now carefully, you need to just move the rear derailleur backwards slightly to allow the chain to release the rear wheel and you're done. Nice and simple. So unlike replacing the front wheel, on the rear wheel you have to line up both the disc rotor in the pads and also the chain. So my advice is to line up the chain first because it's further away. Just get it onto that small sprocket, then line up the rear disc rotor in between the pads and put the wheel in place. Then it's a case of running that axle straight back in again, tightening sufficiently and also making sure that the lever itself is in a safe position, just like with the front wheel. Something to take into account with the rear is make sure that your ankle or your foot can't accidentally strike that lever with the position it is on your bike. Get that tight and safe. Then it's simply a case on this bike of pushing the cage forwards and that will disengage that lock. There we go, and let it back. If your bike has a Shimano derailleur and it has a clutch on it, this is when you just re-engage that clutch and you're good to go. So there you go, that's the basics of removing and replacing your wheels from your bike. Don't forget those little safety tips with the lever accidentally opening and the little handy tip with the cardboard between the brake pads. That saved me on many an occasion. If you want to know a bit more about different types of wheel axle and how they actually work and all the features, click over here for the first in our GMBN Tech Essentials series. There's a whole series of stuff teaching everyone everything about fixing your own bike. As always, click on the round globe to subscribe to GMBN, tell everyone about us, and if you like fixing your bike, give us a thumbs up.